the vibes of this. Oh. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are well. Today I am going to be doing a video which I'm frankly ashamed I've never done before in my year here on booktube. Thank God you're here. Where have you been, bitch? Where have you bloody been? But I'm going to be doing, if you like this, you'll like this book recommendation video. So I have picked five really popular books and or series and I'm gonna be recommending you alternative. I just knocked the camera, don't hate me, for the, <laughs> for the change in angle. The level of unprofessionalism, far too much. So my first recommendation is if you like the Shadow and Bone trilogy by Lee Bardugo, really popular YA trilogy, everyone and their mother has read it. It's kind of average if we're honest. I think I gave it like three stars, 2.52, maybe? Sorry. <laughs> At least say it like you mean it. I love Lee Bardugo's other writing, I love Ninth House, but they just ain't it. But if you're looking for something that's really high fantasy, high concept, a lot of traveling, a really interesting fantastical world, I would recommend the Girl of Fire and Thorns trilogy. So this is like a forgotten trilogy almost, like barely anyone has read it or remembers it. It's kind of from the same era as Shadow and Bone, which is why I think it's a good recommendation because it's that kind of fantasy. We're following a a young girl, I can't actually remember her name. Elisa, we're following Elisa as she marries into this kingdom, she becomes a queen and she has a godstone which is like a kind of jewel in her belly button that means kind of she's the chosen one, she's gonna perform something incredible. There's a lot of traveling that goes on throughout the trilogy to get to certain places to fulfill certain strategic objectives and I just love Elisa's character. She's a really amazing young adult heroine particularly for the time Time that this book was written. In the first book she struggles with her weight a lot, she's overweight when the series starts and just her journey with that and her journey from point A at the start of the first book to point C, point B, point C, I was saying point C because it's the third book but the place that she ends up by the third book is so amazing and I just love the environment, the court politics, the romance that happens in it, it the romance is so much better than the Shadow and Bone romance, let me tell you. Same kind of vibes, like same kind, of, I don't want to say it because it's spoiler but like same kind of situation we've got going on there but the romance so much better so much better me refusing to listen to anyone who says either of the shadow and bone romances are good excuse me please And I just think this is the kind of series that more people need to read. It's an oldie, but it is a goodie. Okay, next is If You Liked, or If You Wish You Had Liked, Stalking Jack the Ripper by Kara Maniscalco. I gave this three stars. I didn't hate it. I still want to read the rest of the series. I just haven't gotten around to getting the second one yet. But also, I feel like this is a great autumn read, so I might just buy it for myself, like... Because I feel like when I'm back in Leeds and it's cold, it's the kind of book I'm going to want to read and be in the mood for. So like maybe I'll just do it even though I didn't love this. And if I don't love the second one, then it's like, it's over. So this is about a girl. Her name is Audrey, right? She wants to cut up dead people, like as a job. <laughs> Not as talking Jack the Ripper, um, but obviously that's very taboo for a lady of her time. And this is about talking Jack the Ripper starting to kill people. She thinks she can figure out who it is, along with Thomas Cresswell, who is like the YA book Twitter, book community, booktube. He's their bitch. Thomas Cresswell is book Twitter's bitch. I mean, I'm just telling the truth. You? I'm not lying. Well, I cannot go a day without seeing that man's name on my Twitter timeline. I get it. He's hot. When I've seen fan art, yeah, he's hot. He's got a bit of a shit trim in a lot of the fan art, I'm not gonna lie. Looks wise, I get it, but personality is just so average. Anyway, but I read this book, the next book, and I was literally like, it's everything I want from Stalking Jack the Ripper, but better. And that is The Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter by Theodora Goss. This is the second one in the series. I don't own the first one physically. I will do one day. One day when I can justify buying a book I already have read. I've spoken about this so many times, but literally when I read it for the first time, I was like, why? Why does Stalking Jack the Ripper have all this hype? when this is literally it but a much better vibe the vibes of this oh 
So this is about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde's daughters and lots of other female versions and female daughters of famous men from kind of Victorian classic literature. It's murder mystery, kind of. It's just them and their found family and solving murder mysteries and gallivanting through the streets of Victorian London and Sherlock and Watson are there helping them and it's so good. Strange case of the alchemist's daughter carrying young adult Victorian historical fiction on its back. <sighs> I need to see a fucking chiropractor after this. It's so good. It's everything I want from Victorian YA, historical fiction, murder mystery. Just give it all to me. Just give it all. I cannot wait to read this second one. Now I've finally got my hands on it. Oh, the Orient Express. <gasps> I just... I just looked at chapter five and it's called On the Orient Express, right? I'm so excited to read this. And it's something I love about this. I listened to it on audiobook originally and the girls, there's like a lot of girls, there's like six of them who are all friends, this found family. And one of them, Catherine, is writing the story of what they get up to. This is her writing the story. At certain moments they cut in and it's like a script of them reacting to what is being written about them. And the one thing I'm nervous about reading this physically, the second one, is that when you're listening to to the audiobook you never know when those parts are gonna come you never know when the girls are gonna cut in so it's really unexpected and like suddenly takes you out the story and I feel like it has that kind of dramatic element to it whereas obviously when I'm reading I'm gonna be able to see when they're coming up on the page but I think I'm gonna like listen to the audiobook and read along at the same time yeah if you want that Victorian dark but YA vibes murders people trying to solve those murders this series, please, please, please read it and tell me what you think, because I cannot wait to read the second one. We need this. This is essential. This is a crisis. One that I really did like, a popular book I really did like, was Daisy Jones on the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is a semi-autobiographical account of the band The Six and Daisy Jones on the Six in the 1970s and their story and the story of the friendships and fallouts within the band. And I love this. This made me sob. This made me cry. This is so good. And my my comparison isn't direct, but if you want another book with like a musical band element that deals with some heavy hitting topics, I'm gonna recommend I Was Born For This by Alice Oseman. So this is kind of, in my opinion, like the YA equivalent of this, the YA modern equivalent of this. It deals with heavy topics, but in like a young adult fashion. So it deals a lot with mental health and anxiety and friendship and stuff like that. There is this really, really famous boy band, one of whom is trans and it's also about one of their fans as she kind of gets swept up in this whole drama to do with the band. It's really, really good. Really unexpectedly good. I think if you love Daisy Jones and the Six and kind of want a young adult version that's a little bit lighter, a little bit more of a contemporary, I think I Was Born For This is a fantastic choice. <laughs> Abominably, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, shut up. Just hearing you makes my flesh crawl. Next, another one I loved was Becoming by Michelle Obama. Now, we have to stand, we have to stand. She's an icon, she's a legend, and she is the moment. Now come on now. This book was just such a lovely read. I think I wanna reread it at some point. I think it's definitely the kind of book that I'll come back and reread in the future. Just learning about her life and kind of the difficulties that she's been through, her experiences and as a child and as a mother and as a wife, just, oh. It's just incredible. I, I really, really loved it. I hope Michelle Obama like writes other stuff in the future. If you want a similarly hard-hitting, emotional, really deep autobiography, I would have to recommend All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. Again, a memoir about George's life and his experience being a black gay man and a black gay boy growing up in America. All of the stuff he's been through and it is so emotional and so hard-hitting and such a wonderful read. And it's told kind of through personal essays say so I think from what I remember it's not really chronological it's told to more through subjects and his family really come alive in this book I think he does a really great job of bringing these people to life that we don't know you know we know a lot of Michelle Obama's family but we don't know his and the way he brings them to life is wonderful and I'd really recommend the audiobook he narrates it I just loved it I really really loved it I think it's just so emotional and deals with so many important topics and tackles some really difficult and really hard 
allowed to talk about topics that like it would just be easy to avoid but he doesn't he really tackles them head on so if you haven't picked this up yet i really recommend it i know it got some hype when it first came out a couple months ago but i feel like it's kind of died down and i think more people need to read it it's such a wonderful memoir autobiography okay i've got two more quickly the first is if you love my pride and pray place joy the Star of the Sea by Anne Wolfe. Oh shit. We'll just ignore that. Let's just pretend that it hasn't happened. I don't know. Die if you love The Star of the Sea, like I do, one of my favourite books of all time, in need of a reread at some point. The Star of the Sea is about this magical world full of books and mystery and the starless sea and strange things occurring it's wonderful it's wonderful it's a really great book for book lovers our main character Zachary finds a book where he himself is in it and something is happening in the book that he never told anyone about and he doesn't know how anyone could possibly know and it kind of takes us through there to underground libraries with cats called up in tiny nooks and it's just wonderful. Similarly to the Daisy Jones and the Six recommendation, I'm going to recommend a book in a completely different age range. And if you want a book like The Star of Sea that loves books and is just unashamed about creating that kind of magical world, I honestly think Pages and Co by Anna James is the middle grade equivalent of The Star of Sea. It's set in this cosy bookstore in London which Tilly's grandparents own and it's about book wandering, so be being able to travel into books and experience these magical worlds. And again, about underground libraries and completely secret bookish wonderful things. I honestly think it's like the Star of the Sea in that regard and like if you love the Star of the Sea and want a younger relative or even yourself to experience that magic, that bookish magic, I think Pages and Co does a wonderful job of it. It is brilliant American literature and I don't care what anybody, it is, it's lit, it should be taught in schools. And lastly, I'm just going to do this one really quickly because they're very similar books, so you've probably heard this recommendation a hundred times, but if you loved The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna, one of the most popular historical books to come out in many, many years. I haven't got my copy right now because I've lent it out. I enjoyed it, but I didn't love it. And I honestly think the superior World War II book that will pull at your heartstrings more, that is a much better written book, is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doer. So this is about a blind girl in Paris who has to flee Paris. And it's also about a young German orphan. And it's such a heartbreaking story. You know that they're two parts again gonna meet somehow at some point. When I read this I wasn't that big a reader, like I was just starting to get back into the habit of reading a lot. It was so late at night and I was like Tom I'm sorry I have to stay up and read it. So I kept him up until like two in the morning reading this book and sobbing. Like I cried so hard. There's this one scene that even the thought of it chokes me up. I don't often read books about war, it's not something that I love to read about, but if that's something that you do want to read about, or maybe you haven't read a book like that in a long time, All the Light We Cannot See is just so touching, so heartbreaking, and just one of the best written books ever. I, I loved it. So there we have it, that is all of my, if you liked this book, you should read this book recommendations. Let me know what you thought of my recommendations. I think with some of these I did a pretty good job. The best one is the Stalking Jack the Ripper one, because they're so similar in vibes, but one is so obviously better. So yeah, let me know what you thought of my recommendations. Make sure you like the video if you did like them. And I will see you very, very soon in another video. Bye!